and this is my pleasure to, to introduce our, our next speaker, Professor Sukho Chung uh, from CCRC. Um, so, uh, Professor Chung uh, has been the, uh, the founding di director of CCRC uh, from 2009 to 2014. He, he got his PhD in mechanical engineering from Northwestern University uh, in 1983. And, and then he joined the, uh, uh, the, the, the School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at, at Seoul uh, National uh, University in Korea. And uh, um, so Professor Chung is, is a well-known expert in the, in the community as he, he served as a, an international secretary of the Combustion Institute. And his, his work is very well known in, in combustion fundamentals, uh, pollutant uh, formation, uh, flame stabilization, or uh, electric field assisted combustion. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, Bob consumes uh, most of my time, so I must be very short. <laughs> and uh, many of you heard uh, uh, a lot on turbulent combustion, so maybe uh, the last one is just switching gear to uh, laminar flames. So, title is uh, Stretch Induced Flame Extinction and Pressure Effect. Uh, the concerns uh, background and extinction of a uh, counter flow premix flame and tip opening of premix bunzen flames and pressure effect on diffusion flame extinction. So factors influencing uh, flame extinction is one is the aerodynamic stretch uh, by the flow field non-uniformity and unsteadiness, uh, typically be represented as a flame stretch. Another one is a preferential diffusion and differential diffusion through unequal mass uh, diffusion rate or non-unity risk number effect and heat loss. So I will uh, uh, focus on the two of the top. Uh. Okay, in counterflow configuration, uh, we can establish a double premix flame that is adiabatic uh, and at the, uh, along the stagnation plane. And the flame speed is influenced by stretch. Uh, when we increase the uh, when you measure the velocity uh, of the, uh, uh, from the st uh, stagnation and then it uh, over here, then it decreases from here and then uh, having minimum and goes up by gas expansion and approach the stagnation plane. And uh, when we uh, define the flame speed something like this and then uh, the flame speed is a function of uh, stre uh, stretch rate, rate and uh, it's uh, one of the standard method of in determining laminar burning uh, velocity by extrapolating to uh, zero stretch. Well, flame stretch is a uh, 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 fractional area uh, change of the flame with, uh, with time. And now uh, when we uh, express in vector form, the stretch has two uh, factors. One is the tangential flow non-uniformity along the, along the flame surface and uh, the other is uh, curvature of a uh, propagating flame, where B is the flame uh, surface velocity, but on, on the tangential surface, flame uh, velocity is the same as the flow velocity. But the effect of the uh, flame stretch on the uh, flames uh, coming from the <coughs> difference between the streamline uh, direction and the flame normal direction, which is controlled by diffusion. Another factor is a preferential diffusion or a differential diffusion uh, when uh, we consider two uh, reactants. And that's uh, basically uh, depending on these uh, different uh, diffusivities, the boundary layer thickness in the uh, summer thickness and the mass diffusion zone thickness will be different. So one can uh, derive a very uh, 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 some, some kind of a control volume approach, why it, uh, those uh, happen. When you take a control volume uh, in the, for example, counter flow flames, and then uh, we have a different uh, boundary layer, layer thickness. Uh, this is the convection along the streamline, but some of the species over here is crossing normal to the flame, uh, and, uh, and the uh, reactant coming into the flame zone is a, a, acting as a heat gain and the temperature going uh, out to the uh, normal or crossing the uh, streamline will act as heat loss. So if these two are different, uh, there is an imbalance. 
That leads to the temperature change, uh, flame temperature change by when Ruiz number is not equal to unity. And the flame speed is uh, affected, linearized form is something like a stretch affected when Ruiz number is not equal to one, some uh, di differential diffusion and the chemical reaction uh, influence from, the, from this. And uh, there is a, a lot of study on uh, how to uh, characterize the flame speed uh, re with respect to laminar burning velocity. One way is uh, one uh, dividing Karlovich number, which is kappa over this uh, time scale, and uh, uh, either Markstein number or the Markstein length has been determined for various fuels. When in, uh, in uh, turbulent premix flames, uh, we, we see some kind of a local quenching and close to local quenching, and, and then uh, that could be caused by uh, a flame stretch. So uh, in terms of the number, number, if we, uh, <coughs> the uh, maximum is uh, decreasing like this, that the uh, extinction is expected somewhere here. Well, in the uh, turbulence regime diagram, we know that Karlovitz number uh, equal to one uh, is a uh, differentiation between the broken flame regime or a thin uh, reaction zone regime. The uh, flame rim model uh, proposed by uh, uh, Professor Peters uh, that uh, through the, uh, through the uh, transformation normal to the flame coordinate, then the uh, derived carbon equation has a very similar characteristics as the counterflow diffusion flame, uh, counterflow flames. So we can uh, express some information from laminar flame uh, studies. And in, uh, in, the, in this regime, the Karlovitz number has not been uh, uh, thoroughly tested whether it's the uh, right criteria for various fuels and uh, various equivalence ratios and, and so on. So before that, uh, the, those equations are uh, derived in uh, 1980s and the things has been changed that uh, a lot of things moved to computation. And uh, in numerical uh, computation with, uh, with uh, 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 detailed kin kinetic mechanism, can we identify those two effects, isolating those two effects, whether it's coming from the preferential diffusion or if it's a, a stretch effect that will eventually reduce the chemical reaction time and leading to incomplete uh, reaction. So uh, I have uh, pro proposed the uh, local equilibrium temperature concept in, uh, in 1998. It's simple, when, once we calculate everything, uh, and then uh, we know all the temperature and the concentration field at given location, then we can determine the equilibrium temperature for, uh, for the uh, for given location as a function of temperature and the concentration that, uh, from the numerical calculation. Then uh, this is the temperature profile. This is for uh, propane air, uh, mixture, lean propane, and the equilibrium temperature is constant. And uh, by the time we approach the uh, uh, flame uh, <coughs> uh, preheat zone, then the differential diffusion between uh, uh, fuel and air, in, in this case, Propane is uh, less diffusive than oxygen, so oxygen diffuses first, then the uh, relative uh, equivalence ratio of propane will go up, so it becomes richer, so temperature go up, equilibrium temperature, so this indicates uh, some uh, differential diffu uh, diffusion, and eventually it comes up over here. This difference is due to the uh, preferential diffusion effect. And this is the equilibrium temperature, but uh, the, the flame temperature cannot reach that over here. So this is an indication of an incom incomplete reaction in the, uh, through the numerical calculation. If you compare the uh, lean and rich propane flames, the, the, the profile is quite different. And uh, from that, uh, these three effects uh, we can be uh, 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 determined in, in uh, numerical calculation. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, uh, laminar flame studies, the, the, there is a premix flame extinction study by, by uh, Professor Law in 1986. 
using this uh, LDB measurement of velocity field by changing the strain rate. And this is the methane case, and this is the propane case. And the methane case, the, the, uh, the uh, laminar burning velocity increases and extinguishes. And uh, this uh, the laminar burning velocity extrapolate value and the extinction uh, flame speed. And this is the uh, stretch rate at extinction. So it's a highly peak. Uh, and propane has also uh, the theta. Okay, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in terms of our laminar flame studies, in terms of our Karlovitz number, we, uh, uh, we non-dimensionalized the Karlovitz number as kappa divided by uh, unstretched flame characteristics, uh, reaction time or flow time in the normal direction, uh, SL0 by, uh, divided by delta 0. And uh, we could uh, use this delta zero from two uh, different definitions. One is the gradient definition uh, of the uh, Spalding's uh, flame thickness, and the lambda of uh, alpha of SL, uh, the Zeldovich uh, characteristics. So if we plot the Karlovitz number based on the previous uh, study, uh, then the Karlovitz number at extinction for methane and propane is quite different. And also the value is varying, say, close to uh, order of 10. And uh, it's a uh, fuel and uh, uh, equivalence uh, dependent. So the idea is uh, whether there is uh, some kind of uh, uh, unified extinction criteria that could uh, relate to the Karlovitz number regime in the, in the turbulent flames. So, we, uh, so for the Karlovitz number, it's defined as the char characteristic reaction time over here, uh, normal, uh, normal to unstretched flame. And this is the uh, characteristic tangential flow time of a stretched flame. So our, um, uh, our idea was, what if we consider both as one parameter? So uh, we proposed the local Karlovitz number in 1996 as Karlovitz number, uh, stretch rate divided by extinction uh, flame speed and the extinction flame thickness. So I don't want to go into the whole tedious experiments with the LDV measurement and, and so on. Uh, so uh, we relied on uh, numerical computation. And uh, before that, uh, this, uh, I was first exposed to detailed chemistry numerical calculation when I uh, uh, spent two months at Aachen with Professor uh, Norbert Peters. And I'm grateful for giving me that, those uh, opportunity. So this is the numerical calculation with uh, detailed uh, uh, mechanisms. This is for uh, acetylene air. Uh, uh, ethylene air uh, with the stretch rate at different equivalence ratio, we have uh, uh, various uh, S curves, and uh, this is the extinction condition. So from that, uh, we can determine the extinction stretch rate. The fuels we have uh, explored, hydrogen, uh, ethylene, I think uh, my eyes are uh, uh, acetylene, acetylene, propane, methane, and the methanol. So it covers the oxygenated fuel and then very high uh, 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 laminar burning velocity fuels. And this is the laminar burning velocity. And uh, this is the flame thickness from the uh, gradient definition of the minimum maximum temperature and the maximum gradient. So when we uh, uh, plotted the extinction Karlovitz number with the equivalence ratio for various fuels, this is hydrogen, this is propane, this is methane. And the experimental uh, data that was shown over here, uh, propane and uh, uh, methane coming down and up, is reasonably close. And, but the Karlovitz number at extinction is still function of fuel and equivalence ratio. So we have tested uh, extinction characteristics. So flame speed at extinction, flame thickness at, at extinction, and maximum temperature at extinction. It's, it is interesting that for hydrogen flame at the uh, various uh, equivalence ratios, the maximum temperature at extinction is almost the same. 
Maybe it's related to the crossover temperature that uh, uh, I will go a little bit more detail later. So if we plot the stretch rate in terms of a local Karlovitz number that we have defined at various equivalence ratio, it goes up. And uh, by the time it is extinguished, it's almost one for all equivalence ratios. So for other fuels, these are six fuels we have tested. And the local Karlovitz number at extinction is one. That is independent of fuel, independent of uh, uh, equivalence ratios. So Karlovitz number at extinction, when we compare the normal time scale and tangential time scale, when it reaches one, then it extinguishes. So the, uh, the implication of this one is, as you have seen before, the uh, uh, stretch rate dependence on the uh, flame speed. That is uh, reasonably linear. If we have some uh, uh, the experimental data for small stretch, then uh, if we know this condition, then we can uh, extrapolate where the extinction could occur. OK, then uh, we come to the Geldovich length scale uh, that is typically used. So we calculated a lot of calculation. Uh, for, with the Geldovich length scale, uh, for the local Karlovitz number, hydrogen is still one, but our other hydrocarbons are reasonably about two. And then we uh, tested the, uh, the local Karlovitz number for the experimental condition, you see, for methane and uh, propane is independent of pressure, uh, equivalence ratio and independent of uh, 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 equivalence ratio and the fuel. OK, then we further test the uh, pressure effect, say, up to 10 bar. And uh, we cannot do everything, so we selected uh, lean uh, methane, rich methane, uh, lean uh, propane, rich propane, and hydrogen. And these are all the uh, relevant information for uh, the uh, calculation. And this is the conventional Karlovitz number at extinction with pressure. So some of them goes up and level of increase and decrease. So all kind of uh, characteristics. When we uh, plot it in terms of a uh, local Karlovitz number, then it's, again, it becomes one. So the local Karlovitz number at the extinction is uh, pressure independent in, in the, uh, within the limitation of the fuels we have tested. And then we uh, tested the uh, initial temperature effect, and it goes on. And then uh, uh, with the initial temperature from 300 to 1,000 K, well, it doesn't change much. So the extinction occurs when the uh, uh, characteristic reaction time in the normal direction and the characteristic tangential flow time, bo uh, both for stretched flame, becomes unity when, uh, when extinction occurs for stretched planar flames. So uh, it could be a kind of a unified uh, extinction criteria independent of fuel equivalence ratio, initial temperature, and pressure. OK, uh, the, the sec uh, second subject is tip opening of uh, Bunzen flames. Uh, the extinction of a highly curved flame, I uh, was interested what what will happen in the highly curved flame. And then, uh, as you have seen this morning, that uh, the PDF of the uh, stretch rate uh, in the turbulent flames, there are m much of the negatively stretched uh, uh, flames. So, uh, stretch, p yeah, and is there, so is there a reasonable extinction criteria for a negative, negatively stretched curved flame? And uh, uh, one example is a tip opening of the premixed Bunzen flames. Well, for uh, rich propane, when we increase the equivalence ratio, tip opening occurs. But that tip opening phenomena is independent of jet velocity. So uh, the, uh, with the same token, the, the stretch factor for this uh, curved flame, say, assuming the uh, uh, parallel flow, is uh, uh, velocity divided by uh, radius of curvature. And we are uh, considering the uh, Bunzen flame tip type of uh, thing. 
that is a highly curved uh, uh, negatively stretched plane. So first we measure the um, uh, uh, tip curvature. Uh, this is the, uh, from the direct uh, uh, photo and uh, uh, boundary uh, capturing and, uh, and then uh, fitting with the oval uh, and then uh, determine the radius of curvature. Uh, this is the flow, flow stream, uh, very vertical except the edges and then deflection by the gas expansion. And he, this is the methane uh, uh, flame with the uh, increasing uh, uh, equivalence ratio, propane uh, with the increasing equivalence ratio. Uh, over here you can see the tip, but uh, there's a tip is open and, prop, uh, and that uh, is more clear from the uh, OH image. You can see the hole of OH at the tip. And uh, for, uh, for propane, uh, by changing the velocity uh, for, uh, for pi equal 1.4, which we uh, still have a tip, uh, all the flame is, has a tip, uh, we, uh, even though we increase the uh, flow speed. And for 1.5, you can see all the holes of OH at the tip. So this phenomenon occurs at constant equivalence ratio. So we uh, measure the OH in intensity along the, along the uh, uh, central, uh, center line. And then uh, from that, uh, we see the, this, uh, whether there is a maximum. And the uh, uh, maximum intensity is something like this. And uh, suddenly it becomes uh, very small near the tip re region. So there is a, a gradient change. And the uh, tip opening may be 1.42 or 1.43 independent of velocity. So this is the condition uh, the, at the tip opening. It's about 1.43 uh, uh, independent of uh, velocity. Then we measure the velocity field. What will be the velocity in the other uh, tip? And uh, the other tip is, uh, I will show you later, but uh, uh, the twice the average velocity, typical uh, Boise uh, flow of velocity profile maintained. And uh, the temperature uh, along the center line measured by cars shows uh, it doesn't, when it's open, it doesn't have uh, much uh, temperature rise. And then the, the gradient uh, becomes smaller and smaller. And uh, uh, the tip velocity, this is the UT times, uh, uh, two times uh, average velocity Boise flow and the measured velocity uh, the, uh, here. That, so the local velocity at the tip you can utilize uh, to uh, U bar. And the, uh, the radius of curvature we measured uh, for propane, uh, methane flame and propane uh, flame at uh, different equivalence ratio shows that radius of curvature decreases with the U bar. For example, here is about say uh, 0.2 millimeter and then tip opening occurs. So if we plot in terms of a Karlovitz number at extinction, Karlovitz number is something like this. At given uh, uh, equivalence ratio, these are all constant. And uh, for, for as we change the pi, for given uh, equivalence ratio, when we increase the velocity, this value is kept on increasing. And then tip opening occurs over here. So it's, it, uh, it does not have a constant Karlovitz number at the extinction. While the Karlovitz number at the uh, at, uh, uh, local Karlovitz number, now this uh, flame speed at the tip is the two times of the velocity, right? So uh, when we uh, substitute that, that then local Karlovitz number is alpha of uh, u bar r, velocity times r is in the denominator, uh, which is constant for given equivalence ratio, independent of uh, uh, flow velocity. So if we plot the local Karlovitz number, then uh, the, the local Karlovitz number in terms of uh, equivalence ratio is something like this, although the Karlovitz number in terms of velocity is increasing uh, over here. And it uh, has a uh, tip opening at all the uh, local Karlovitz number at the same uh, condition. While the uh, methane air uh, does not have a tip opening, 
So some of the, this implies that the equivalence ratio, uh, the constant for uh, propane tip opening, but uh, is uh, fuel dependent. There must be certain uh, uh, Lewis number effect. So uh, what our experiment is to maintain, uh, say, up to 1.5 equivalence ratio. Uh, we have a uh, envelope diffusion flame. So what will be the effect of envelope flame? If we don't have an envelope flame, then the flame blow out easily. So uh, instead of uh, investigating that for large uh, 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 velocity, the, the distance from the adiabatic flame temperature to the tip is quite far away. So maybe the, uh, the uh, super adiabatic effect from diffusion, heat transfer from diffusion flame might be small. So to test that, uh, instead of that, we varied uh, uh, different oxygen-nitrogen ratio to change the temperature and uh, different fuel, including butane, and uh, all the local calories number at extinction is one. Uh, is constant value. So what could be the implication on uh, turbulent flames uh, uh, for uh, potential lean methane flame uh, that we expect a tip opening, but very, very lean, uh, lean condition. And another is uh, for rich propane or a lean uh, uh, rich butane flame, uh, it has a tip opening at the specified uh, e the equivalence ratio, then might be re uh, uh, some relation with a partially premixed flame, such as a lifted uh, turbulent jet flame. So we had uh, uh, about this 20 years ago already, uh, we have uh, established a laminar lifted flame and it increases and it comes down with uh, the with br jet breakup and uh, when the uh, it becomes fully turbulent, then the lift of height increased of uh, jet velocity. So there will be a lot of partial mixing inside the flame. There must be a region where that it, uh, reaches uh, something like 1.4, then uh, the flame might be uh, extinguished. And final is the pressure effect a bit, uh, for diffusion flame now. As uh, we studied uh, some time ago, eff effect of pressure on extinction acoustic pressure uh, response and uh, NO formation in diluted hydrogen air diffusion flames. And uh, this is the uh, uh, extinction strain rate with pressure. So the extinction stretch rate, strain rate with pressure is not linear. It's a highly uh, nonlinear behavior. Uh, initially it increased uh, close to uh, uh, pressure to the uh, one uh, linear power. And as the pressure goes up, uh, this uh, uh, extinction rate decreases very rapidly because as, uh, as, as pressure go, uh, goes up, the three-body recombination uh, becomes effective. And then uh, uh, here's the plot of the temperature uh, at the maximum temperature at extinction with pressure. And this is the crossover temperature, which is the uh, uh, balance of the uh, H plus O2, the chain branching, and the uh, uh, HO2 formation cycle. Then there is no, only the pressure effect over there, so uh, this crossover temperature is something like this. So when the, the flame is, uh, is uh, close, the, the flame temperature becomes low than uh, this crossover temperature, there is a uh, rapid drop of the, uh, uh, of the extinction strain rate. And as we go further, the uh, pressure, then the, in the high pressure regime, this OH, OH plus M, this reaction and this reaction, the bag of the reaction becomes uh, fast, so it, it will increase again in the high pressure regime. So this is the regime diagram uh, in terms of dilution of hydrogen fuel. It could all, uh, occur uh, between uh, low pressure to say high pressure depending on, on, uh, on the uh, hydrogen uh, more fraction. Okay, uh, I will stop over there and thank you very much for your attention.